for the WBC Continental America's Middleweight Championship between the defending champion, Aran Barkley, and the challenger, Tony Harrison. Three punches by Barkley. He just keeps throwing. Barkley's gotten in at least 15 punches without any retaliation by Scipion. Barkley really going. Scipion got in the right hand. And the Barkley answers that with the right, right, right hand. was a real good shot by Barkley. Oh. The right hand. Wow. Oh. Barkley. He walked right into it. A perfect right hand. He cannot be saved by the bell. He must get up. It's all over. It's all over. 26-year-old Aran Barkley had a perfect year in 1985. Eight fights and eight wins. It changed him from journeyman opponent into up-and-coming contender. Barkley's career turnaround was built on hard work, dedicated training, and a fierce desire to make something of his pro career. He expects the success to continue. Well, the plan for this year is to get, you know, much further, much better things this year. I'm looking to do much better things this year. New year, new things. Last year was last year. This is a new year. I want new things, better things. And, and to get those better things, I got to work harder. And the only way I'm going to do it is just to work hard. So I'm going to stay on top of what I got to do. And like I said, whoever else comes in my way will leave the premises. What are you going to see this year? KOs. And I'm not playing. KOs. Everybody go. I'm knocking everything out. And the ones that don't get knocked out, they're going to wish they was knocked out. So they just better quit. I'm coming through like a steamroller. I'm not playing. Barkley's toughest fight of 1985 came in December when he went against Mike Finley for the WBC Continental America's Middleweight Championship. Barkley's powerful punches helped sway the judges in his favor as he won a close 12-round decision. It was a major step in his four-year pro career and proved that all the hard work was worth it. He's made it into the world rankings and plans to stay there and keep his belt. I think this guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first round, I'm going to take it to him. Although I'm the champ, I'm going to take it to him because nobody can't take what I got. I won this belt from a tough man, and I'm not going to let no Oklahoma guy come along and try to take it or nobody else. So I'm going to take it to him, and I'm going to knock his head off. the belt being brought in ran the blade his first fight in 1986 what a year 1985 was for him finishing it off by winning the wbc continental america's middleweight championship belt and as we mentioned it's uh despite being a mouthful it's a stepping stone into the world rankings and joining us here at ringside is another fine middleweight, an up-and-coming fighter who's fought here at Madison Square Garden, spelled for him, Michael Alagide. He's worked in the gym with Aran Barkley. He's seen him anyway. What are your thoughts about this fight, Michael? I've never seen Tony Harrison before, but um, I do work in the same gym as Aran Barkley. Aran Barkley is a very strong fighter. He's a very good puncher, and um, he's determined. And when you have those things working for you, those things are your assets. It's very hard to stop an opponent like that. Okay, thank you. We uh, will invite Michael to join us for the commentary in this fight. And certainly he'll be watching with some interest. You never know if one of these two will be in against Michael in the upcoming months. Aran Barkley and Tony Harrison. Let's get the official introduction from Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. And it's for the Connell Americas of the World Boxing Council Middleweight Championship. And it's being promoted by Madison Square Garden Boxing, Bob Goodman, Director of Boxing and Matchmaker. It's approved and sanctioned by both the Connell Americas of the World Boxing Council, the Honorable Marty Cohen, Supervisor in Charge, and by the New York State Athletic Commission, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Jose Torres Chairman. The chief physician in attendance at ringside this evening is Dr. Frank S. Polk, along with his two fine colleagues, Dr. Billy Layton 
and Dr. Andrew Pastian. The judges, Nick Cimino, Peter Heller, and Georgie Colon. Counting for the lockdown second, alternate referee Carl Duke Schroeder. The timekeeper to bell is Cecilio Pedraja. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 round title bout, referee Nick Drake. And now, boxing fans, introducing the principal. First, in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He tipped in at an even 158 pounds. This gentleman has 17 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw, with 12 knockouts. All the way from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, Tony Tiger Harrison. Harrison. And here's the opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. This young man has 17 wins, three losses with 12 knockouts. From the Bronx, New York, boxing fans, here's the champion, Iran Wade Barkley. Barkley. I think the fan reaction tells you who they came to see. Instructions are ready. You all know the rules. The fighting for the title. I want a clean fight. Be prepared to see referee. fight, not wrestling. So check on and good luck for both of you. Scheduled for 12. Rand Barkley, has new management, new trainer. And Brazil's improved defensive work. We know about his power. Tony Harrison has the height advantage. Harrison is 20. Seven years old. And Barkley's all over him right away. If Barkley has one glaring weakness, it's that the defense that we told you about at the top of the show. But he's been closing up on it a little bit. He's not as easy to hit as he used to be. And I'm sure, Michael, you're sitting here watching both guys thinking, hey, one day I just might be in the ring with you. Either one of these. Uh, definitely. We both, uh, we're both in the same division. Uh, Iran and I are both shooting for the same thing, as is Tony Harrison. I think um, either one of these matches would be a great fight for New York fans after seeing these two uh, gentlemen fight here tonight. Barkley putting on early pressure. And landing with that left hook. Barkley has power in both hands. We saw the tremendous power when he knocked out Wilfred Scipion back in November when it looked like he was tiring. Michael, do you ever want to climb in the ring with uh, Barkley, perhaps just to spar with him and just test him out a little bit before you got the ring? Do you think that's a, a giveaway, or would that hurt you or help you? I don't think it would. Um, it would either way. It would be. Um, it'd be something that's really. It's not really weighed on the boxer that way. I'm just. Um, I look forward to fighting any fighter that um, that's qualified to fight me. He's ranked in the top ten by um, certain organizations and. And I am also, and I think it'll be a very good match for the TV public, for New York people. Um, as for working with him in the gym, I don't think it will be the best to uh, have his manager's interest. Referee Nick Drake stepping in, cautioning around Barkley. Great right hand gets in. Harrison looking a little tentative right now. I think when you're in with a guy with a reputation as being a real solid puncher, as is Barkley, you tend to be a little tentative. Barkley all over with that left hook. Harrison trying to fight him off. I got a feel that Harrison is making a mistake, especially in the first round, coming out winging with a puncher like Barkley. Hey, it is very dangerous. Aaron Barkley is really keyed up and ready to lay loose with some of the heavy artillery. Uh, so far, Tony Harrison has been avoiding those shots, but if he stays on the, on the ropes of the he'll be in trouble, I'm sure. Final second round. Professional boxing coming to you from Madison Square Garden, spelled for him. The dark trunks, Tony Harrison in the white. 
Good first round for Barkley. It looks like Aaron Barkley has settled down a little more now. He's trying to find his range. And uh, he's, he's slipping punches very well. He's, he's relaxed, and, and I think he's going to start getting down to more serious boxing and picking his shots. This is the guy, Barkley. Good left hook. Backs up Harrison. He felt the effect of that one. He holds on. Here, Barkley trying to work his way loose to throw some punches. Again, the left hook. And again, it scores. Harrison finally gets at him. Lands the right hand. Boy, Harrison is big. <laughs> he winds up with those right hands. I think Tony Harrison has already shown that he, he can take a very good shot. He's taken a lot of Iran Barkley's uh, good left hooks right on the chin, and, and he's blinked a little bit, but he's taken them very well. Three of Tony Harrison's losses have been to top-notch fighters. He was stopped by Dwayne Thomas in the eighth round in June of 1984. In November that same year, he stopped in the tenth round by Buster Drayton. And then uh, in March of 1985, stopped in the fourth round by Sumbu Kalambe. And I told you about that fight against Buster Drayton. That was a war. In 1984, the two of them really went at each other. Buster Drayton, now the IBF junior middleweight champion. Fighters missing with right, but it's Barkley who's carrying the fight here and dictating the pace of the fight. Iran is digging the body very nice. He's coming under with uh, some good hooks to the body. And here you see Tony Harrison coming back with a nice combination of his own, a couple of minutes. Nice left hand to the box. And again, Harrison shaking up, backs off. Barkley working the body well. Now most of those punches are missing. Iran is open for shots. That left hand is down by a great waistband. But Harrison not taking advantage of it. Well, it will be dangerous for him to open up when Iran Barkley is loading up like that because then he's gambling. Uh, he played a wise by not throwing anything at the same time as Iran. That way you're just trading punches. And that's very Harrison going down to try to avoid the punches. Professional boxing coming to you from Madison Square Garden, Gulf Forum. Taking a look at this scheduled 12-round WBC Continental America's Championship in the middleweight division. And Barkley again applying the pressure on Harrison. Harrison turns it around. As they slug it out. Well, this is what Harrison's been working on in Oklahoma City. Trying to get that right hand in. Working on his leverage, working on his power. This could be a mistake against Barkley certainly can. When you've got a, a known puncher in front of you, I'd say you have to box. Harrison has got the height and reach advantage. He's been unable to keep Barkley off him. Michael, a couple weeks ago you were seen right here on the WC Network, and you were in against Randy Smith, a very unwilling opponent. Isn't it more fun sometimes to have a guy in front of you who at least will open himself up? Definitely. It gives you a lot more to shoot at it. Oh, it'll make you look better when you have an opponent in there that's willing to fight, that, that's looking to uh, score himself. And it makes for a more competitive fight, a better fight for the crowd, and a better fight for yourself, like I was saying. Barkley landing the uppercut. Punches coming from all angles. Harrison absorbing a lot of punishment. Good left uppercut. Harrison wide open now. He's hurt. Looks like he's almost ready to go down. Left hook scores. Harrison is down. Walker was nice and he could have nailed it down on the way down, but he didn't. The count is seven. The count is eight. Nine as Tony Harrison slowly walks around the ring with just over a minute to go in the round. Harrison looks like he's just about out. He should be looking to hold at this point and not take a lot of these shots. Nice body shot. His body is hurt. Harrison's out. It's over. No, he's counting. Oh. Now Nick Drake stops it. That's all. No sense to count. 
He started the count, but saw Harrison was finished. And I'll tell you, I believe it was the body shots that really started it, those body shots leading to the first knockdown. Definitely. It was uh, Iran started digging into the body, slipping those punches, bring the left hook un under and then over. It was a very nice job by Iran Barkley. The powerful Iran Barkley, his ninth straight win. Yeah. Seven of those wins by knockout. He's a powerful man, and he looks like a man who's going to be reckoned with in the middleweight division. He reminds me of a middleweight George Foreman, a guy who could bang but without those fast hands. And he comes in and he pulverizes him. He doesn't care where he hits him. He just lets the punches fly. A nice body shot got him in trouble. Then that left hook on the face sent him down. That was knockdown number one. At this point, he knew he was a beaten man, but his heart said, come on, you got to get up and finish it. Here it is. He does wild shots by Barkley, but they still carry a lot of steam. He's a very strong middleweight. That's our scene reminiscent of Jerry Cooney, what he did to Kenny Norton when Norton was just pulverized and left on the rope. There's also a good job by the referee stopping that in time and not giving uh, Iran Barkley three shots at, at uh, Tony's head because I think he seriously could have been hurt. Tony Harrison is okay. He's come a long way and he told us this was a crossroads fight for him. He's been stopped by uh, several opponents. There is the WBC Continental America's championship belt. It belongs to Rand Barkley. This is his first title defense. And it's a successful one. He won the title when he defeated Mike Finley in a close fight back in December. Won a split decision. But now, no doubt about it. Carlos Roca's trainer, his co-manager, Benny Ferguson, is there. And it's interesting that uh, fight when he knocked out Wilfred Scipione, it was Benny Ferguson as the referee who counted out Scipione that night. And now he's handling Moran Barkley. He saw something that night. Let's get the official announcement from ring announcer Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, two minutes and six seconds of the third round, and a winner by a knockout, and still, the Canada Americas, the World Boxing Council Middleweight Champion, Iran, Wade Barkley. Barkley. In the ring at this time, the supervisor in charge of the Canada Americas of the World Boxing Council, the Honorable Marty Cohen, along with Deputy Commissioner Rose Trentman of the New York State Athletic Commission will present the belt to the champion, Iran Blade Barkley. Let's hear it for him one more time. Well, the belt still fits. It's a beautiful belt, it really is. Obviously, it's not uh, a championship that is well known, but I guess any, any title that you win is important. Personally, it's got to bring tremendous satisfaction. Definitely. It's always something that uh, a fighter holds a lot of pride to. I'm sure if anyone went up to Iron Barkley and said that, wasn't, uh, that isn't a legitimate belt, he'll have something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a beautiful belt. He's proud of it, and he fought to earn it. He fought to, to gain uh, control of that belt. So it is, it is in, all, in all terms, a, a legal belt. If you were fighting a Rand Barkley, how would you fight him? Uh, um, I really wouldn't know yet. Um, I would go about my normal style. That would be to, uh, to work off the jab, bring it under the body, and, and uh, use a lot of headshots. Aaron Barkley's a strong fighter. You'd have to be careful with him. But I would, um, I would fight a smart fight with him. I wouldn't be looking to trade punches like uh, Tony Harrison did. Okay, Tony Harrison made the mistake and paid the price. He stopped in the third round. Aaron Barkley has won by a TKO. You're watching professional boxing from Madison Square Garden, South 